Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy and welcome to part 43 of my ultimate guide to Logic Pro. In this video, I'm gonna show you several advanced quantization techniques using both the quantization settings in the Piano Roll Editor as well as in the Region Inspector. Because there are things that you can do in the Region Inspector with quantization that you can't do in the Piano Roll. So if you're not familiar with quantization at all, you'll definitely wanna go back and watch part nine of this series before jumping into this video. In part nine, I demonstrate the basics of quantizing MIDI notes for time correction, and I explain many of the basic quantization values. But in this video, I'm gonna focus on more of the advanced features, especially the advanced features in the Region Inspector. Now, kind of like the last video, some of these techniques are definitely niche things that not all people are going to be using all the time, but there are some really cool techniques here, especially if you're trying to make MIDI recordings sound more realistic and human, while still quantizing the MIDI data to make it more on the grid. And after this video, we'll move on to some more electronic music production related topics. Before we get into this tutorial, I wanna quickly tell you about the sponsor of this video, Boombox. If you're a producer or mixing engineer, and you're looking for a fresh new way to collaborate with and collect feedback from your clients, look no further than boombox.io. Boombox allows you to upload your tracks and invite your collaborators and clients to a project who can then leave time-stamped production notes and mixing feedback on the tracks. Once you've made revisions, you can upload new versions of the track to the project. As a mixing engineer, Boombox helps me easily collect feedback from my mixing clients and turn around quick mixing revisions. But don't take my word for it, try it out for yourself. Head over to boombox.io and sign up today to get four gigabytes of free storage. Okay, so I've recorded a bunch of MIDI quantization examples here in this project. And if you wanna follow along with me, this project is available as a free download in the video description below. One thing I demonstrated in part nine is that you can quantize in Logic in two different places. You can apply quantization to an individual region and everything in that region by using the region inspector, or you can double click and open this up in the piano roll editor and you can quantize on an event by event basis using the quantize values here in the piano roll editor. So if I just wanted to quantize these notes, I can simply select these notes and then select a quantization value. Whereas if I select a quantization value here, if I select this whole region and then I apply a quantization value with the region inspector, like an eighth note here, this is going to apply to all of the notes inside of that region. So in previous versions of Logic, this was referred to as region-based quantization and event-based quantization. So I'm gonna be jumping back and forth between the Piano Roll Editor and the Region Inspector throughout this video. Okay, so let's check out our first example here. This is a piano part that's mainly just eighth notes. And one thing to remember is that just because the time quantize here shows a value in the piano roll editor doesn't mean that that's a value that's actually being applied at this point in time. You can see that these notes are not perfectly on the grid, although an eighth note would be the most appropriate value here. So let's give this a listen as is. Okay, so one way to quantize this would just be to press Command A to select all of the notes and then simply select eighth note as my quantization value. Now everything's gonna be perfectly locked onto the grid lines at an eighth note. The problem is now we've sort of taken away the human element of this performance. All of the notes are perfectly in time. All of the chords are pressed perfectly at the same time and it's gonna sound a bit robotic. Thank you. 
And by the way, I've got the metronome running in all of these examples so that you can hear a reference for the downbeat. So what you might choose to do is not only quantize to an eighth note, you may also pull down the quantization strength to make this a bit more human sounding. So as you pull down the quantization strength, you'll see the notes sort of drift away from their quantization target. And so this maintains more of the human element of the performance. Now you can actually do this in the region inspector as well. So I'm just gonna keep the piano roll editor up just so you can see the notes as I'm quantizing them. But if I select this whole region, come over to the region inspector and quantize to an eighth note, there's an additional option down here. If you load this more menu, there is an option called Q strength. This is identical to the quantization strength setting here in the piano roll editor. So if you pull this down from 100%, you'll see those notes start to drift away from their intended targets, just like they did with the strength slider in the piano roll editor. So it's been quantized to the grid, but it has more of a human feel to it because it's only being quantized at 44%. Next, let's move on to triplets. So let's check out this example. This is a much shorter example. And this is an eighth note triplet example. Now, right now, the grid is set to 16th notes, so it's not very obvious what this is. So I'm going to change my LCD over to custom view, and I'm going to change the grid to slash 12 and you'll see that some of these notes here are triplets. Now, this is a situation where you may not want to use region quantization because there's one regular eighth note in here while the rest of the eighth notes are all triplets so you can see that each beat here when we have these fast moving notes is split into three it's even done here as well but right here there's one note here that's right in between the second note of the triplet grid and this is just a standard eighth note so in a situation like this what you may want to do is select everything quantize it to your triplet uh, grid. So I'm gonna do an eighth note triplet here. Roll back the quantization strength, because again, I want a human feel here. And then what I'm gonna do is select just this one note, and I'm going to quantize it to a standard eighth note rather than an eighth note triplet. So that's the great thing about quantizing in the piano roll as opposed to the region inspector, is you can quantize different notes to different values. Or in this case, I find myself sort of coming in early all the time. So maybe this first chord, maybe I want to quantize this a bit more than the other notes. So I'm just going to roll up the strength there so that first chord is more on the downbeat, whereas the rest of them I'm using a much lower quantization strength. So again, it's another advantage of quantizing in piano roll. Here's another triplet example. Now, if we look at the drums, the drums are perfectly quantized to an eighth note triplet, but the bass is not, and uh, neither is the synth. So this is a situation where 
I may want to quantize perfectly to the grid. With electronic music, we're going to find that it's pretty uncommon to quantize off of the grid, especially for stuff like this, for synthesizers. I mean, if you're working with piano and electronic music or something that's got a bit of a like a unique groove to it, you may, you know, dial down the quantization strength. But typically with most electronic music, I find myself quantizing uh, directly to the grid. So a bass line like this that needs to match up with the beat, I'm going to select this. I can either choose an eighth note triplet and 100% quantization down here, or I can do it up here. I can select an eighth note triplet, and everything in that region has been quantized to an eighth note triplet. I can go to my pluck here. Same thing. I can select a triplet value, and there we go. Next, let's talk about swing. And there's two main types of swing values that you can quantize to. You have eighth note swing and 16th note swing. So this first example here is just a simple drum beat with a straight eighth note pattern. And it would probably help if I change my grid back to 16th notes. In fact, I'm actually gonna change this to eighth notes just so there's a grid line for each note in the beat. Okay, so it's just a very simple eighth note groove. What we can do here is we can quantize to an eighth note. Now that's not actually gonna do anything to the notes because they're already on the grid. But when you use swing values, it's important to make sure that you quantize to the value. You can't just use the swing parameter without using a quantization value. And what you can do is you can pull up the swing amount and you'll see every other eighth note drifts away from its starting point. So if you pull this up just a little bit, you're gonna get kind of a lazy soft swing. And sometimes that's what you want. Like it's a straight feel song, but it's got a little bit of groove to it, a little bit of swing to it, just to make it sound a bit more human sounding. Or you can try pulling this up to a higher value and get like a really, like a more exaggerated noticeable swing. Now, one thing I want to take a look at here is if I change this back to a triplet grid, you'll see that even with a 100% swing, the swung notes aren't quite reaching the triplet grid. And a lot of people get triplets and swing confused because they think they're the same thing. But the reality is swing is sort of like a variable thing. You know, you can have light swing, heavy swing, medium swing, whereas a triplet get grid is just a triplet. You can have a song that has a swing to it and have the swing be a really heavy swing with the swung notes being directly on the triplet grid, but you can't really do that easily in the piano roll editor, at least not with the swing slider. So let me show you another way to approach this. What you can do instead of using the eighth note and then the swing slider is you can actually use a swing quantization value and these are like an old, old leftover from the early, early days of Logic, even before Logic was Logic. But you'll see that there are six swing quantization values for 16th notes and six of them for eighth notes. So if you choose one eighth swing A, this is essentially going to be exactly the same as a straight eighth note. If you choose swing B, this is going to pull it a little bit further back. Swing C is going to pull it even a little further back. And as you go down the list, that swing is going to be more and more exaggerated to the point where if I change this over to an eighth note triplet grid, by eighth note swing E, you'll see that it's a perfect triplet style swing, 
meaning that the swung notes align with the triplet grid. And if I take this one further to swing F, now it's a really heavy swing. It's almost more like a 16th note that's slightly ahead of the grid. And that on its own actually has a pretty cool kind of groove to it. Um, we can take this back a bit to E. And because this lines up perfectly with a triplet grid, I could use triplet ideas, synth ideas and bass ideas along with this beat. Now, another way to approach this is to do it in the region inspector. So let me just go ahead and undo this quantization and turn it off. So now I'm back to straight eighth notes again. And if I select that region, go into the region inspector, you'll see that those same eighth note swing values are here. So I could quantize to a swing E, or I could quantize to an eighth note, and I could apply the swing here. Although the great thing about the, the Q swing value here in the region inspector is it gives you a wider range of swing values than the swing slider in the piano roll editor. So essentially, if Q swing is at 50, that's straight eighth notes. If you roll this up to like 66, that's gonna give you like a that perfect triplet swing. And if you pull it up higher than that, you can exaggerate it even further to the point where you can get the swung note to almost touch the, or you can get it to touch the very next eighth note. So there's all sorts of cool uh, grooves you can create here by varying the swing. Now, in addition to regular swing, you can also pull this value down below 50% and get like an inverse swing where the swung note, instead of being delayed, actually comes in a little bit early. And it just completely changes up the groove. Now this next one is 16th notes. So once again, if I wanted to give this a bit of swing, I could quantize to a 16th note, which on itself isn't gonna do anything because the notes are already quantized to 16th notes. You'll see if I switch over to a 16th note grid, everything lines up with the grid. And if I apply swing, now the 16th notes are swung. Every other 16th note is pulled away from the first 16th note. Gives us a really nice swing groove. And just like I demonstrated before with eighth notes, there are 16th note swing values. So if I choose something like swing D here, it's gonna be a pretty heavy 16th note swing. Or if I wanna exaggerate it even more, I could use E or F. Don't focus so much on just getting the notes in and quantizing to the grid. You've also got to think about the overall groove of your song and how all of the musical elements in your song are gonna lock into this groove. And also in the region inspector, you can choose 16th note swing values as well. Okay, I've got one more uh, swing example here I wanna show you. Okay, so nothing's really matching up. Let's take a look at the beat first. This is straight 16th notes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to quantize this to a 16th note, and then I'm gonna pull up the swing to like 67%, just like so. Just that little bit of swing I'm adding is taking a boring 16th note beat and turning it into something that has 
a nice groove and flow to it. And I wanna make these other instruments follow that groove. So let's go to the bass here. Yeah, this is an example of something where I played it swung, but I kind of played it, I didn't really play it very well, let's just put it that way. So what I'm gonna do is actually quantize this to an eighth note. That's gonna give us straight eighth notes. And then let's roll up the swing a bit to 67%. Now that's not matching up so great because I have an eighth note swing bass and a 16th note swing beat. But you can kind of play with the swing to sort of massage the notes together so the grooves interlock. So there I'm mixing and matching uh, eighth note and 16th note swung grooves. And I had to dial back the swing on the drum beat a bit to make the bass match up. And then I've got this pluck instrument here. Now this is just straight eighth notes. So I'm gonna quantize this to straight eighths. Now, one of the things you lose by quantizing things is you lose any sort of natural flam that the note has. Flam is when you have two notes where they're not played exactly at the same time, but they're sort of intended for the same uh, rhythmic target. Something like that, where two notes are played really quickly right next to each other. And the term flam comes from the drum world. Like when you do a snare flam, you're hitting the snare drum with both sticks roughly at the same time, but not quite at the same time. So one thing you can do here to kind of get that flam back that you lose by quantizing this to an eighth note. See, everything's perfectly on the grid. Is you can use one of these other advanced quantization settings down here and this one's called Q Flam. What this does is if you roll this up, you'll see the top note drift away from the bottom notes. And if you roll this down, you'll see the bottom note drift away from the top notes. So if you want to give, you know, octaves like this or a chord or something, a natural flam to it, you can do that here. Or you can even push this even further and make it almost like a manual arpeggiator as well. I don't want quite that much, I just want a little bit. So I'm gonna roll that back, yeah, about 50 ticks. So much better than what we started with. Next up, I wanna talk about the remaining advanced Q settings down here at the bottom of the region inspector. I want to talk about Q length, Q velocity, and Q range. So let's start with length and velocity. So what these do is they quantize or unquantize the velocity range and the length of the notes. So I've got this piano idea here. It's completely unquantized. And in order to use these values, you do have to quantize to something. So here this is looking like an eighth note mainly. Yeah, an eighth note. So I'm gonna select an eighth note in the region inspector. I'm gonna pull the Q strength way down, like really, really low. I want barely any quantization here, just a little bit. And let's give this a listen as is. You're, you're gonna find that the dynamics are pretty wide. You know, the velocities get pretty loud at certain points and then softer at other points.
Okay, so let's say that I like the way this was performed. I want to maintain the human dynamic and the human feel to it, but I want to bring down some of the louder velocities because the louder velocities are really overtaking the left hand parts. This is where Q velocity is super helpful. So Q velocity is a value between plus 127 and negative 99 with zero being the default velocity that was played. And to most easily demonstrate this, I'm gonna pull up my MIDI automation and put this on note velocity so you can see the relative velocity of all the notes. So you can see it starts kind of soft, comes up, comes down, comes up again, comes down. And you can see at certain points, there's some really high velocities being paired with some sort of mid-range velocities. And if I were to pull up the Q velocity, watch what happens all of the velocities start to come together and you're almost quantizing the velocity. You're making the velocities more uniform by pulling this up, right? So eventually they're gonna sort of quantize together uh, in different ranges. And if I pull this down below zero, this is gonna make even more out of the velocities and even more out of the dynamics. So here's what the dynamics really wide at negative 43. Yeah, that's too much. There's certain notes in there that we can't even hear. So let me try the opposite. Let me go into the positive here. And this is gonna pull down some of those louder notes and pull up some of the softer notes. And one thing I may want to do here is after I set the Q velocity, I may want to play with the velocity slider here and just bring all of the notes down a bit if I feel like it's still maybe a, a bit too loud. In addition to Q velocity, you can also play with Q length. And what this will do is it will adjust the length of the notes and sort of make less out of the note lengths or make more out of the note lengths. So if you pull this up, you'll see that all of the note lengths become a bit more uniform. And if you pull this down, this will make more out of the note length. So short notes will get shorter, long notes will get longer. Okay, so the last advanced Q value in the region inspector I wanna show you is Q range. Now, Q range is really helpful when you have rolled piano chords, a piano roll, uh, not like piano roll editor, but a roll is when you sort of quickly arpeggiate uh, notes in a chord, kind of like this. Now, if I were to just quantize this to, say, an eighth note, this is going to be fine for most of these notes, but the rolled notes are going to be just kind of offset like this. They're no longer going to sound like a roll. Now, one way to deal with this is just to simply quantize the notes here in the piano roll editor that are not rolls and then leave the rolls alone. But another way to deal with this if you want to work in the region inspector is to quantize to the value you want. Now, normally for piano like this, I would probably roll down the Q strength to something more natural. But just for sake of demonstration, I'm going to keep this at 100% for now. And what Q range can be used for is it's a way to ignore notes that are a certain distance away from their intended target. So if you pull up or down the Q range value, you're gonna get positive tick and negative tick values. Now, typically I use this in the positive. So if I roll this up to say something like 50 ticks, what that means is that notes that are outside of 50 ticks away from their intended target, these notes are not going to be quantized while notes that are within 50 ticks of their intended target will be quantized. So you can see the roll here is not being quantized except for the top note, while these two chords are being quantized, these chords are all being quantized, and these chords that were kind of further away from their intended target are also not being quantized. 
So this is a way to kind of keep a human feel in your recordings, especially when you have roles like this. It's not always 100% uh, accurate, like with what you're actually trying to do. But I do find it helpful to roll up the Q range a bit if you have roles like this. And then you can uh, bring in your quantization strength at whatever level you want it to be. And so now I've quantized these notes while still like maintaining a human feel and also maintaining the roles in the piano parts. Okay, so to wrap up this video, I have four more sort of weird niche quantization values I wanna show you. These are available in the Region Inspector and in the Piano Roll Editor, and these are the tuplet or tuplet values. So a five tuplet is when you, or a pentuplet, whatever you wanna call it, is when you have five quarter notes that are sort of squashed into the space of four quarter notes. Or the five tuplet eight, this is like five eighth notes that are squashed into the space of what would normally be four eighth notes. So if we're in four four time and I turn on eighth note grid and I type in four eighth notes, you can fit four eighth notes into quarter notes or one half note. However, in the rare case that you want to fit five notes equally into the space of four, at least in, in terms of eighth notes, this is where the five tuplet eight quantize value comes in handy. So if I select all these notes, I played this in and it's, you know, it's a little rough in terms of its timing. So it's two quarter notes with five notes equally spaced across those two quarter notes. If I use the five tuplet eight quantization value, you'll see that this equally spaces these out across those two beats. These are a super niche thing. I almost never use them, but that's how this works. If you can find some way to make a cool five tuplet eighth note beat, uh, you're, you'll be already doing something original that I don't think really many people or anyone has done. Now, if we look at five tuplet four, you know, a normal quarter note would just be four quarter notes per bar. Just something like that. So I could quantize these to just a regular quarter note. However, if you sort of squeeze five notes in the space of four, you get something like this. It's like a polyrhythm. It's like a five against four polyrhythm. And if I drag over these and use the five tuplet four quantize, this will equally space these out. So once again, I'll play four quarters and then you'll hear the five uh, tuplet quarters. Again, it's a very strange sort of polyrhythmic feel. The values are there if you need them, but again, I almost never use these. All right, next up you have seven tuplets. Seven tuplets are sometimes called septuplets, and this is where you take seven notes and you stretch them out to fit in the space of eight eighth notes. So normally, if you had an eighth note like scale like this, and I quantize this to an eighth note, it would just sound like this. So you've just got one eighth note per grid line there. So there's eight eighth notes per bar. But with a seven tuplet, you're putting seven notes in the space of eight. So if I select these and quantize to a seven tuplet, now each note is sort of delayed uh, a bit further behind the grid line to perfectly fit seven notes in the space of eight. Again, another very strange niche quantization value, but it's there. And lastly, we have nine tuplets. So once again, if we have regular eighth notes, we would have eight eighth notes in the space of a bar. Well, nine tuplets squeeze an extra note in. So I'm selecting nine notes here, but that are equally spaced 
into one f bar of 4-4 four, four time. And if I quantize these to a 9 tuplet, so I'm going to play the 8th notes and then I'll play the, the 9 tuplet right after it. So again, fitting nine notes in the space of eight eighth notes. So those are the advanced quantization features in Logic Pro. Again, like I said at the beginning of the video, some of these things are niche quantization values that you'll probably never use. Others uh, can be extremely helpful for creating realistic piano and keyboard recordings and orchestral recordings where you want a human element to your MIDI recordings and you don't want to lose that natural human element to your recordings by quantizing everything perfectly to the grid. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.